And welcome back to the Off the Clock Show. Joined again with your hosts, Sean Gervais from Orbisex CRM, as well as Marshall Hill from Pints of Polishing Podcast and Hyperbeak Car Care Products. That's right, Captain TRX. That's what <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to come over. The... What, is that? what was it again? Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, uh, just dropped though. I'm pretty excited about just dropped the re-release, the reformulation of uh, we just you know did a little edits to the formula nice. for ceramic snow. Oh, okay, all right. And uh, it's a, a product that uh, previously didn't foam very well, mm -hmm. and it's still not right. It's still not foam wash type yeah. foam shaving cream, but it's foam. Nice. And we leveled up the protection too. So I now have a protective soap that foams. Oh, that's wicked. You literally feel it after you dry the car. You feel it while you're drying. You feel it on the, the paint. There's protection. And it's super cool, man. I'm excited about it. So excited. That's wicked. And you should be, man, because that's a hard thing to accomplish. You know, like. Previously unattained. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. Like, anyone anybody yeah that's true and then because it, it's like you can do one or the other usually you mm -hmm. know and then having it like all in one psh, man hats off to that man jesus yeah. so and then with improvements too because i know version one was nice so version two so it's already dropped or it's coming yeah yeah drop yep oh, mm -hmm. all right we record an episode and and it's out so everybody this past weekend that that ordered uh they got the new version so it was cool Oh, shoot. That's wicked. Okay. So old version discontinued, new version replacing it. Yep. Wicked. Man, that's dope. Same price range or? Yeah, yeah, exactly same. Uh, I now also have began to as my network, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> as my net continues to expand, a uh, new uh, scent company we started working with and uh -huh. a very, very unique scent. And what I'm excited about scents is not doing the same thing that everybody else does uh, what i'm excited about since is people going what is that oh yeah, man. yeah, yeah. okay damn oh, what is, but you're right what is that like yeah, yeah. people are already guessing like so oh man that's uh, amazing you know that's something in my opinion that i feel is overlooked a lot uh, mm -hmm. so, something i hate is things that are too chemically uh, definitely and uh, like uh, we just cleaned some stuff around our pool and we had some leaves that fell down and then uh, I think it's they're called tannins whatever they you know it's mm -hmm. concrete and stuff so I tried all these different products that you know they had at Home Depot and stuff like that none of them worked very well by the way um, but they all had terrible smells to them as well and I was like geez there's got to be something else out there so I looked some stuff up online and this guy, he had a concrete business and he said, what you need to do is it's simple. He said, just equal parts, bleach, water, and then tide, you know? And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. one ounce of tide. I was like, okay. So I thought about it and I was like, okay. So he was recommending just get like the, just the original, no smell to it, detergent kind of thing. And I said, you know, I could do that. Or maybe I get something that's got like a mountain breeze or something. <laughs> so i did and you know what i tell you made all the difference in the world because yes you can still smell the bleach but i knew i was gonna be swimming later that afternoon i didn't want to just be smelling bleach around the whole pool right so i said you know I'll get something that it actually was called i think it was moonlight yeah it was moonlight breeze or moonlight mist or something anyway something like that or something yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but i tell you it actually was effective and i could barely smell the bleach still a faint smell sure but once i washed it off it was okay but what was left is I could just smell this, uh, man, it was, it was nice. And, you know, when you get your car clean, it's kind of like you buy a new car. You want that new car smell. Well, I know I don't, you know, if it's not a new car and it just got clean and detailed, I want a scent in there. You know are what you I mean? Car wash owner, are you sure everybody wants a new car smell? No, Actually, most people don't buy. want a new no, car No, but what if, when you buy a car, you want that new car, like, you know, it hasn't been broken in, you know? Have you have you done the research? What the most popular scent asks for at your car wash? I haven't actually. Wow, you should. I should. You it's... should. The you data know? I have is mango. Mango. No shit. I would not Number have guessed. One. Wow. Number one. You know what? Not even I'm, close. I'm gonna test. I'm gonna test that out. 
We're gonna and get if you go, food. wait, we don't have mango? Mm. Damn. That's a tip. There's a tip. I'm yeah. out of here. Because I Zuna. don't have mango. That's it. <laughs> Damn. I'm getting juice on my own episode. Shit. That's, I need mango now. It's <laughs> crazy. Oh, my God. You know, that's wild. I'm going to check that out because, you know, scents are one of those things. Like uh, my business partner, Nick, ah, he's crazy, but he, he's got this furnace system in his house to heat up his house as normal. But there's a company that makes this little machine that you hook up to your furnace and you buy these little pods and you put them in there and you can have the scent go through your whole house. But they oh, only yeah. have very specific scents. And so they don't do like, there's not really like fruits or anything like that. They're scents from hotel chains. So you can choose a hotel chain that you've been to and whatever scents they're using, that's what they put in the thing. So, you know, he's got one for like the Royalton and this and that. And so that'll just like sift through his whole house, you know? And, uh, but it's, it's one of those things. Scents can, you know, make or break your mood for the day. They can, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff. And so when it comes to that whole customer satisfaction thing, those little things at the end of it, like if they get in the car and it, it you know, yeah, it's clean, but it doesn't smell like anything. Like maybe it smells like chemicals or something. It's it's going to do something different to their their whole experience. You know, mm -hmm. they're about they get in, they're like, "Ooh, what's that? What's yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, mango, huh? Damn, <laughs> that's the, it's the one scent we don't have. <laughs> we have so many. Oh, other you know, you don't have it. Oh, okay. Oh, I know for sure we don't have. So mango. Bring it in, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. in a couple months, oh. let me know. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Watch our our five star reviews triple. <laughs> no, you got the reviews done. Don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Don't worry about that. But I would, I mean, from everybody that we've done this with, mango. Just everybody wants mango again. They want mango again. Like it becomes wow. the scent. That's like, interesting. I'm telling you, not even close. I would have thought now, it would have been like lavender or something. What you guys need to do up there in Canada is go <laughs> listen. We've got. Maple syrup mango. Maple syrup mango. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. The, the fusion. That's what we... Then you're good. Because right. then we're mixing the north and the south. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like... It's... <laughs> you know what? Real quick on that note, we did try something for one summer. And it worked... Well, it was around springtime. But it worked out quite well. Um, there's these lilac bushes. I don't know if you've ever smelt uh, like the lilac flowers. Really strong smell. And they just grow everywhere like crazy. Uh, up here anyway so anyway we we snipped a bunch of them and then every time we finished the car we just put it on the dash and no joke within five minutes the whole car even if you take it out smelled like it, it was just it's such a nice smell it's kind of like a lavender type smell almost but uh anyway we, we put that in and customers were telling us it was a really nice touch we stopped doing it after a while because we could only do it for a very short period of time and then after that people were asking for it it's like eh, see you next year <laughs> you know what i mean so we had to get something that was more standardized and but now mango, that's getting added to the list because that for sure we can we can get in bulk. So interesting mango. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's that's cool, man. <laughs> that's a good tip for me. <laughs> there you go. I'm out of here. Enjoy the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's really gonna help us get to another level. So I, I appreciate that. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So what's been going on in the group? Um, so a few things in the group. Um, where to start? Uh so I, I got I got Two good ones we'll go into in the group. Uh, one is about Google Ads, and then the other one is uh, I got a shout out as well. So uh, first thing, Google Ads. Been uh, getting some questions lately about people seem to be wanting to take their own marketing uh, or take the marketing in their own hands, um, which does make sense to at least be involved. And if uh, maybe you don't have the funds to hire an agency, maybe you got burned over by some agencies, that happens as well, um, or you're just not seeing the results. It, it is good to have at least an understanding of your ads. Uh, but depending on your experience with marketing, you may or may not want to just, you know, fully jump in, um, and try and do that on your own without doing any research. Um, so there's some things you should do to try and understand about Google ads first, maybe some YouTube videos, things like that, and try and maybe, kind of learn about them first. Not be like two yeah. weeks of definitely, yeah, you should definitely, <laughs> because this is real money. Right. It's it's yeah. really me that you're spending. It's this isn't a, a game. You know? So you want to make the most of that money. And the more research you do, the better your ads will be. And I think most people are like me mm -hmm. that 
throw some money at it and we think we can do it. Uh, and we throw some money at it, but we don't really throw money at it. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. more like, like, yeah, yeah exactly. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The cat just like pawing at a, thing. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it, I think you're right though. You bring up a good point. A lot of people underestimate how much it actually costs to, to run high performing Google ads. Right. Yeah. And the reality is it's not a lot of people get fixated on the cost. Like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to spend, you know, like $4,000 on Google ads. And it's like, yes, but when you do them right, <laughs> the goal that you're going to make, you know, 20, 30, 40, like it's going to be a huge multiple. But right? when you're spending a hundred bucks a week, it becomes, 100 bucks a month, yeah, you it's, know, 50 bucks a day. It's just, you're just not it. It, that it just you it's so hard to see that it's almost you can't even see it it's true because the returns are so minimal and you're spending so much that you don't realize what it takes to get that snowball right like yeah it's it, hard to get the traction going you, you always have to go back to i think if you're somebody that is is, is wanting to go through this moment and, and go through this should i or should i you know i think you should go to the the pure fact of what it used to be said around marketing and what it takes for somebody, if they see something, how many times it takes for them to see something before they'll buy it. And that's the person that buys it. Yes, absolutely. But they need to keep seeing it. So Seven was the old number for billboards. Yeah. Right. And you got what the reason why I say that about, they always would say this number out like, well, people need to see it seven times. So we're going to put you in this busiest place. I go, okay. And like you think about it now, you go, but those are the people that bought it. So I've got to also pay for all these other people that are going to see it. And do nothing. 700 times. Yeah. <laughs> just so I can get these few people that it needs to see it seven times. That's right. True. And what that trade off financially and then what it actually would mean if you spent the 4,000 instead of the hundred, those people that needed the seven times actually now online need it. Uh, the, the data from a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, I think when I saw it was uh, 21 times. Uh, yeah. So it had tripled. Now yeah. that was pre-pandemic. So as social media continued to increase and Google, YouTube and all that's continued to increase, yeah. What is it now? I mean, is it 30? I, I don't yeah. know. And that's for the what? What's the percentage? Like 0. 0.0 something that would actually yeah. buy. So yeah. you've got to spend all that to yeah. get the just if below exactly. 1% that needs to see it 21 times before they buy it. Then you just go. 100%. It's, it's oh, true, though. And Are you the person going to be able to do it that long and to, or should you just go ahead and find somebody that you can work with? You know, and I do it. And if you do know. that route, be prepared that you're still going to be spending around the same. It's not going to be cheaper. You're gonna have to, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, you know, it's it's the same for us. And what we look at is our ads now are profitable, but that's because we've been running through the same ad account for three years now. And so Google's had a chance to learn. Uh, we've tweaked it a lot. We talked to our Google ad rep. Uh, they're free. You just book a call with them. They'll, they'll call and tweak your ads. They have access to data that they won't necessarily tell you the data, but they'll help you, you know, configure your ads and stuff, but they can see all kinds of stats that you don't have access to. And they can see, you know, things that need to be done. Ultimately, they want you to stay on the platform. The longer you're on Google ads, the more money you're going to be spending. So Google has these reps, they're free, just book a call with them. They'll go through things. Are they going to be as good as a top tier agency? No, because a top tier agency has a different world experience. You're than, paying you know. a top tier agency. Exactly. That's the thing. And so <laughs> in terms of free support, um, they are they are really good and they have really good suggestions and they have things like in the beginning, we were using like broad based terms and they helped us by putting, you can put little symbols before and after keywords that mean different things. Like you can put like a, a plus symbol and it'll include you know, each of those words separately or as a group, there's, there's little like tips and tricks that they'll do and they'll actually configure it for you. So it's not like they just tell you, oh, just go in and do X, Y, Z. So if you're not tech savvy, don't worry about it. They'll help you out. But they're there. They're at your disposal. You're literally paying for them by purchasing ads. 
So use them a hundred percent. Cause I get questions daily from people. They're like, can you take a look at my ads or can you help? Like, uh, how come this ad's not showing up or what do you think my budget should be? This and that. And honestly, they're, they're the wrong questions as well, because it's, I, I don't have enough information with that to even answer your question because it's, uh, it's like what budget works for you. I don't know. I can tell you what I'm doing at my shop, but it might not work for you based on your finances or maybe keywords cost more where you live. And there's all these different variations that, you really just have to do some homework and reach out to the Google ad support team. Um, but for us, a lot of our ad spend is kind of break even in terms of the actual service that they're booking initially, uh, because the, you know, the ad spend for all the people that didn't purchase plus the ad spend for the person that did purchase, if you factor all that in, it's like, okay, we lost, you know, a thousand dollars trying to reach all these people, but we closed four deals and we're going to make a thousand dollars based on what they booked. So it's a break even but we have a really good sales process on the other side of that. So we're gonna A, take that customer or those customers and we're gonna upsell them so that we get more than what they had booked. But the second part of that is we know that our customer service is gonna be top notch, the results are top notch. We've now got that customer for many more years. So for us, it's like, okay, so if it, honest to God, if it cost me, if it was break even, we had to work for free and get a customer, I would take that any day of the week, 100% even if it cost us money out of our pocket, because I know once we've got the hook in, they're ours, you know, and that's how we're going to just repeat that process. But you have to have both sides of it going. You have to have your ads going, pumping money into it so that your funnel keeps getting filled. And then on the other side, when they reach the end of the funnel, you've got to have a process in place that does the opposite. You take that one customer and turn them into more sales, more customers, more referrals, more this, more that, more visits, so you have to have both of those pieces in place before you should even think about throwing some serious money into Google ads, to be honest. So perfecting that side of the process and then tackling your Google ads is, is how I would do it for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's a mini tip, I guess, for today is book a meeting with your Google ads rep 100%. They're, they're fantastic, honestly. You know, and if you have a garbage one, book another meeting with somebody else. <laughs> they have many of them. You know what I mean? So that's, those are options as well. Uh, but every account does get, you know, a dedicated rep and you can always ask for a different one and stuff like that, but, but go through it. Even if you just listen, tell them, don't change my account. I just want some information, ask your questions, things like that. You know, it's part of doing the homework. You either do the homework or just spend a lot more. So those are your options, you know, and it's, I would recommend doing both, but anyway, but uh, so that was that one. And then the, the second thing in the group, uh, man, we have a very active listener, uh, He's, he's, he's great. John, he's uh, based out of Toronto and he's been implementing things that he hears on the episodes and oh, the yeah. is seeing his stats, seeing how his business is growing and flourishing month after month, week after week, based on putting things in. And he sends me little progress updates. We talk back and forth and stuff. And it's just amazing. So shout out to you, man. You've been implementing things week after week and it's making a huge impact in your business. So that's, that's number one. Amazing. But he sent me something recently um, uh, from another company that had sent out an email after the Memorial Day. And so they didn't try and send out something with every other company, you know, uh, creating noise. And instead, they waited until after, just after. And they said, hey, hope you had a great, you know, Memorial Day weekend. Sorry we missed you. I'm sure it was busy. Da, 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 da. And then they went into their sales pitch. And he recognized instantly. He said, holy shit. He said, that's what Marshall and Sean were talking about, where, <laughs> you know, set up these automated reminders to go out either in advance of an event or after an event, not during, because mm -hmm. you're just like, you're just throwing out a, you know, a snowflake into a snow pile, basically, you know, it's, it's better to just wait until after. And I tried to make a Canadian reference there, but <laughs> <laughs> so wait until, you know, either before or after. And so, you know, he heard us when we were talking on the podcast and that's what we do with uh, anniversaries and birthdays. And so we'll send something like, you know, uh, we know you were busy on your big day, but we wanted to say happy belated birthday and blah blah blah. A little message from Auto World, right? So we do. I was things. trying to, I was trying to look up your his order while you were talking about. It. He's, I can appreciate it too. He he orders from us, yeah, because right? yeah. he listens and and he orders too. I was, I was about to see what he what he got last time, but I, I couldn't find it. So my my fault. Mm -hmm. I was trying to listen and look up his and orders. look up his order. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's what I love. You know, I I can really appreciate, which is what I wanted to say about it. Is you know people that listen and then. You know, there's that theory of pay it forward, pay it back, you know, like 
if, if you get something from somebody that you didn't have to pay for and you got a little nugget, you, you know, just like if you get oh, seated boy. in a restaurant or somebody someplace takes care yeah. of you, you know, you don't stiff them. You give them a five, you give them a 20, you give them a 50, whatever. Like yeah, yeah. You, you get a good experience at a place, you tip the place, you take care of the place because if you take care of them, they're always going to keep taking care of you. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And the, you know, that goes back to this thing. I can't remember who said it, but um, uh, it's basically life is just a bunch of moments. And in your business, everything is about moments. And if you can create a moment, then you'll earn a memory with the customer. And yeah. it's, it's the same thing in all, all things. Like when you're networking, if you have mentors and all these kinds of things, anything you're doing in your business or your personal life, when you're creating these moments, the better the moments you can create, you're going to earn those memories. And so it, it goes back to, you know, like when you're dealing with your customers, if you create, you know, spectacular moments, those are going to be organic things that they just talk about with people because you've now earned a spot in their memory. You're living there rent free. And, and it's the same kind of thing, but it's, yeah, it's really nice to see people that, you know, they listen to it and they let us know like, Hey, I did this and it, it worked out really well. You know, it really helps. It's, it, it keeps us going with the tips to give them more things that, uh, you know, Hey, this could help your business. But then at the same time, making sure they, you know, they pay it forward as well. And he's like, look, he's placing orders with you. And he's like, Hey, thanks for the tips. And let me yeah, try absolutely. and, you know, love them. It's, it creates a really nice ecosystem. You know, and, uh, so yeah, I had to give him a shout out. Absolutely. He's uh, time and time again, you name it. It's like uh, we mentioned something about, you know, QR codes on, on signs. Boom. He's got one the next week, sends me a picture of it, you know, stuff like that. And so it's, uh, I don't know, that, that those kinds of things that just like fill my heart with so much joy, man. I love seeing people succeed. And we're dropping every week, like tip after tip after tip. And it, it breaks my heart when I see people in other groups that are saying like, you know, my business is really slow right now. What do I do? And stuff like that. And I'm like, podcast is free, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's there, you know, it breaks wow, my heart right? kind of stuff. Hey? Wow. Like, wow. Oh yeah. It's insane. It's, it's crazy. Man, the day gotta day, press play there, buddy. Just press yeah, play. That's it. That's all you had to do. And then do what they tell you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly and that's the thing you want to reach next levels you want to level up you gotta you know pay attention and execute that's it you know and it doesn't mean it has to be a one for one uh like we'll throw out an idea and put your little spin on it and then you'll reach the level that you want to get to, you know like uh it's it's just the premise like i i gotta share this today i had a funny sales call uh so i was doing some some printing outreach today I'm training a new staff member. They're going to be doing some some customer service, but also some sales for the print, print shop. And uh, I said, listen, we we try and be different with our marketing because printing can be really stuffy, very corporate. And oftentimes it leads down to the lowest price. It's just, oh, you have the same paper as the next guy and the same this and that, the same machines. We all buy the, you know, the Kodak or the Heidelberg Press. Like we all buy the same things. So it's really just comes down to price. However, there's two areas where a print shop can differ, and this relates in detailing as well, because a lot of us, you know, sell, sell or use the same products. We do the same, you know, services, things like that. But there's always areas you can differentiate, and we differentiate ourselves in two ways. You know, pricing, sure, we compete with pricing, but mainly it's two ways. Our customer service when things are going bad, and our customer service when shit hits the fan. Those are the two things that we excel at. And so it's like, listen, sure, let's assume paper and everything is equal between us and the next guy. Let's assume that pricing is more or less the same. What happens when shit hits the fan with them versus when it hits the fan with us? Because mistakes do happen. So we play on those kinds of things. And so I was training her and I said, listen, we got to be not too serious when we do things. So I was doing some live sales calls with her today. And I called up a company. I said, look, so we're going to look up a company that hasn't ordered. And we have a CRM similar to Orbis X, but it's for the printing industry. And so I went in their CRM and I know we have all the data there. I can look up, you know, customers that haven't ordered X, Y, Z. So I said, we're going to find some customers that ordered some notepads. And then we're going to find genders and make sure that they were females and stuff. And then we're going to send them an automated message and follow up with a phone call. And I <laughs> called and said... I think it's time to uh, to buy more pads. And, and she looked at me like, what the hell are you saying this to this lady on the phone? <laughs> and the lady on the other end, she's on speaker, and she's like, excuse me? I was like, yeah, your last order of notepads was over eight months ago. 
And so, but it caught her attention instantly. When I called, I had a feeling she was going to be busy doing something else. She answers the phone. She's still doing whatever, holding it on her ear, you know. I said one thing, captured her attention. She started laughing hysterically. Now we had a whole conversation and everything. It's what we were going on. And the point is, there's ways that you can differentiate your company and you can do things. Now, if I was to tell someone that as a tip and say, yeah, I call someone to make a joke like that, they may flub it up big time, right? So the whole point is we give you guys tips that you can execute and you can implement, but you got to find a way that makes sense with your company. Maybe your company is more corporate. Maybe it's more, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you're very super relaxed. You know, maybe you would have even went with a more racier joke. I have no idea. But take these kind of ideas as inspiration and execute them in your business. And you'll see, you know, same kind of results as what Dijon's seen, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think you need to buy more pads. Oh, <laughs> she's like, uh, it's personal. Is it time? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. I was just curious. Is it time? Did yeah. you need more pads? You need more pads? Exactly. See, yeah. it's pulling the way you, you know? <laughs> yeah, it worked out well. By the way, she did place an order. So this is good news. Well, sure, yeah. she did. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, she works for a school board, dude. That's hilarious. Hey, man, you know, people have a sense of humor. You know, that's that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. So, how about you? Anything going on in your groups? Always. Uh, we've had we've had a lot of fun, man. It come off of big weekend. It was a great yeah. uh, Memorial Day weekend. We actually uh, it's interesting, uh, really changing up the way we do holidays and and how we as a company kind of. Uh, especially around Memorial Day, since yeah. we're, you know, we're pro-America, pro-U.S. manufacturing, right? So we yeah. we really see the way some some businesses kind of use Memorial Day in a, we kind of wanted to differentiate ourselves. Uh, similar, I think you've talked about differentiating, you know, it's like, you know, not not exactly what we want to do the way we've done it in the past. So it, it was fun. It was fun to see a great weekend, great responses, and uh, looking forward to seeing what we do over the next holidays. I'm excited. It'll be good. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's it, man. Because mm -hmm. holidays are great marketing opportunities. They're also great mm -hmm. opportunities to take a step back and mm -hmm. wait, yep. you know? And I think it's it's that whole thing is that it's, it's kind of like a bow and arrow. You know, you pull it back, but you're in control of when you let go, you know? And I think, you know, you wait until you have that perfect moment. And then that's when you, and, and I agree, we, we do the same thing. Like we used to do a lot of stuff that every holiday and we would just put out crazy promotions or do something else. And we found two things were happening. One, we were getting lost in, in a lot of the noise. So they weren't mm -hmm. as effective. But the other thing too, is sometimes you strike chords you may not have wanted to strike, you know? You look around and you got a bunch of flies in your business, huh? Yeah, exactly. And so that's where we realized that one of the biggest ones too was like, you can pause your Google ads, for example, right? We pause them prior to holidays. Always, 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 always. Unless we're running a very specific promotion for some reason, um, we'll pause them. Uh, two reasons. One, the ad prices jump up quite a bit because it is an auction. It's whoever's going to pay the most in that, that moment. That's number one. Number two, the customers that we found we were getting, it was their first time becoming a customer. It's not like it was repeat business. And they were only interested in the best possible price because they know we've, we've all conditioned them. Every business has conditioned consumers when holidays are approaching, you can expect, you know, 20, 40, 50, 60% off. And that's the crowd that we were paying big money, top dollar to pull into our business. And we said, no, 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 no. stop that. Let's just pause the ads wait till after the holiday. We still market to our, you know, existing customer base during the holidays, but we just pick and choose the days. And then when the holidays, you know, the dust is settled, click on the ads again and voila, we start getting top tier customers again. You know, it's just that little bit of effort, you know, planning, but that's what business takes, right? <laughs> business planning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's good, man. Yeah, glad you had a good holiday too. Uh, yeah, we did. We uh, went down to Dallas. Oh, shit. No way. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. Took a little road trip. And uh, I'll just go ahead and get into it because it's actually rolling to my my tip. Uh, 
Okay. Got a got a, a message from a listener, Randy. Appreciate it. Uh, Randy's a, a listener here, uh, Orbisex user, also a, a hyper clean user, and and he sent me a message that I thought about a lot this weekend. You know, went down to Dallas, uh, a lot of a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of issues headed down there. Uh, thank you to everybody that continues to reach out. More tornadoes landed here in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, some weather's weather, right? You, you count your blessings that you didn't happen to you. That's really all you can do. And, you know, Randy sends me this message and, you know, we're down in Dallas. Uh, soccer tournament gets canceled. Okay. Right. If, if driven down day one gets pushed back, you, you got to stay longer day two, right. Then it just gets canceled. And then it's, Right. You can understand then the the tension, the, the aggravation, the grumbling, right? Yeah. It's building. <laughs> and you could easily go, yeah, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. So my wife, within the past couple of years, as you and I have talked, started a business. Mm -hmm. I took the moment that question i got from randy to use it inside of this weekend while we're down there because i get the question that says hey you know if you, you started here and you got to here yeah how'd you get there uh, man uh, great question yeah start at level one and get to level fill in the blank yeah what does it take to get to level fill in the blank it's a big question well i'm gonna yeah. Great question and a big question, right? Yeah. Like both. Uh, I start hearing this grumbling inside of my room, specifically right next to me in bed. <laughs> Let's go and say this for a second. Yeah. It, it, no matter what level you're at, if you want to go to another level, Constantly, you will hear every single person talk about mindset. Mm -hmm. And you will hear them talk about positive versus negative. I don't know who all the other parents work for. And maybe there's some that work, you know, I, I don't I don't know what happened. You know, maybe some of them on their own business. I don't know. I don't know their dialogue. But what it came across from the stepson was, Everybody's pissed off. Everybody's leaving. They're gone now. He was over in some other room playing and everybody was pissed off and leaving. And it's like, so now everybody was like, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> if there's a thing that you got to do to get to a, you have to always figure out that, listen, you could see it in, just go watch a movie. We watched in particular, we watched Fall Guy. Mm. Wouldn't necessarily particularly suggest to go spend your money on watching it. Maybe rent it or it's one of those where we say, wait for it to come out on, on VHS. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, wait for it to come out on DVD, you know. Wait for it to come out at the rental, right? So, uh, you know, now you can rent them when they're at the theater, but, you know, probably better to spend the you know, the 19 or the five or the 10 instead of the, the 80 at the theater, right? Yeah. <laughs> $20 a ticket, like better to wait. <laughs> but I, I did have a really great, uh, like a uh, cola slushy with Jack Daniels in it. Uh, those are the bad phenomenal. When you get the no, they can butcher them. They can butcher them. Right. If, if you do like a, a slushy and they put the wrong amount of alcohol. Uh, right? that's true. They can be butchered. This was, they did that's it right. It was a Jack and Coke slushy. And I was like, yeah, they, they nailed it right. I'm Popcorn, good. I'm good. <laughs> Every movie and Fall Guy in particular, there's always something that happens. Mm. And usually they go down a path that then they have to figure out a, a way to get back on course and Forget all the drunken nights and messed up, you know, whatever depression, myself included. Most of us always have a thing that snaps us, mm -hmm. right? Something that we have to recover from. In order to not get to that need to recover from something, 
What do you have to do to not have to recover from something negative? You go into each moment in particular where everybody else can be mad about something and you would go, okay, I get it, but we're already here, right? We're, hotel's already done. There's no, yeah. right? It's done. <laughs> like it is what it is. <laughs> like, you all want to go back? Let's go back. But hey, we could also do what Michael Irving suggests. I'm, I, I can't go get hoes, but I can go to Papa Dips, right? Yeah. Michael Irvin, when they won the, the Super Bowl way back a long time ago, you know, it was, what are you going to do to celebrate? Well, I'm going to get some hoes and go to Papa Dips. <laughs> I got my wife and I got my stepson and we went to Papa Dips. Some of the best seafood you will find in Texas. And it's a, it's like a soul kind of like, uh, it's definitely Creole you know, they definitely are that New Orleans style. So we had dirty rice. We had, oh man, had some great stuff. Uh, I, I got to get calamari, big plate of calamari. I got gumbo. Listen, dude, I lived it up because yeah. when you got to make a change from negative to positive, right? There's a lot of rap songs or cool songs we can go through on that, right? Yeah. But if you want to take a negative to positive, you do have to then also... Enjoy some positive things to life. Yeah. Right. 100%. I mean, I think that's one of the hurdles. We could have gone home and then just been like, great. It was a great, we saved the day. We were okay. And we made it back home and we sat on the couch and watched the movies and we ate some food and enjoyed some, or we could take a negative and turn it to a positive, not just a neutral. And I had a great weekend, man. We went to play video games after that. Found a little arcade. It was fucking like 15 bucks. All you can play the old Pac-Man. We played everything, right? Uh, introduced her to uh, uh, all kinds of the old style video games to also the Simpsons. We had that where we were all running around oh, with yeah. the Simpsons. They were everything, right? All that old school stuff, taking drinks. And then he was over playing where they had this whole row of PlayStations and he did all that. I mean, we did Dig Dug. We did everything, right? Asteroid. That was... That was the interesting yeah. one. I just couldn't figure out, like, hey, yeah, it's all these old games. You could see the mathematical equations to them, right? And where yeah. they would have to go at certain times. You just go, like, yeah, come to this spot and shoot, right? Come do this yeah. because it was so simple. The it's equations pretty... on those games were very simple. So well, now, you know, as older, older, you go back and play. Yeah. yeah, you can, you can, you can see the equations better. So, it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had a great weekend though. The joy of them was man, that's amazing though. And now let's assume that the plans didn't get messed up. Would you guys have done any of those things? Papa Do's was already on the list. Okay, so that was absolutely every time I go to Dallas, <laughs> yeah. I go to Papa Do's. And here's here's a here's a, a tip inside the tip. I'll pull out and put it back in. Uh, <laughs> little double tip. The reason I shared this story with them while we were there, because they were both like, This is a great place. And I was like, Yes, Papa Do's is it's it's a really in Anybody that goes, like, you really should. I think in uh, one of the airports, there's even a Papa Do's. He's good food, but he's also one time, so they used to have, and I used to go this a long time ago. I've been to the Papa Do's a long time because we would go to Car Wash Expo. So one of my largest accounts when I was distributor for chemicals was a multi-chain car wash, right? That we also did all of their detail supplies, all of their car wash supplies, I got into them soaps, right? I mean, we were doing all kinds of stuff from. So if they were going to go to an expo, I wasn't going to let them yeah. go walk around by themselves, right? No <laughs> fucking way. So when they wanted to go, I said, yeah, let's go. And I went to every expo that they went to. Hell yeah. Right? And so one of the managers talked about, Pop and that's how I got started going to Papa Do's. And we found, <laughs> actually, I, I went to Papa Do's because, before then but at the reason why i started going back every time was this manager tried fried oysters they had fried oysters fried oysters right yeah. great fried oysters and they at lunch they'll put it in a po' boy for you and you get a po' boy fried oyster well one time they didn't have them oh, and we had a table of like six and we were like listen man we came all the way from oklahoma we're here for this expo. We came to Papa Do's specifically for these oysters. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me see what we can do. Now, now it's off the menu. You have to specifically order for them. Okay. But back then you didn't, and they were out and they couldn't get them. We said, Hey, listen, we need it. 
the manager calls the other stores and then drives over to get them. They go, if you can wait 30, 40 more minutes, we go, absolutely. Bring us more beers. Let's take another appetite. Like the whole table got oysters. We got everything. Wow. It was like, because that guy did all that. Yeah. Every time I'm near Papado's, it is great food, but I'm also going because at one point they did whatever they could to take care of me. Yeah. And look at that, that, that in itself, that is a great tip right there. It's yeah. just look at that. And then boom, time and time and time again, they've got your loyalty now. Always. Because of one gesture, you yep. know? And he could have very easily just said, sorry, man, order something else, you know? And but it's an expensive. It is an expensive, nice restaurant there too. Yeah. So they take care of people when they need to ask, right? We're standing at the front. We're waiting for a table, even though I'd made a reservation. One of the ladies at the bar comes over and goes, hey, we've got some tables here while you wait. Let me get you a drink. What'd she do? She earned herself an extra five bucks while yeah. we enjoyed a couple beers. Like, 100%. they're smart people. They take care of people. It's a high-class yeah. place. Like, Yeah. And you know what? You brought up a good point, though, I wanted to touch on, is that you said – but it's an expensive restaurant, so they take care of their people. The thing is, a lot of business owners, I don't think, understand that you set the prices as the business owner. And so if you want to offer, which I think you should, that level of service, price your services in a way that you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, when I say high class, it's not... I know like... what you mean. No, no, yeah. but I know what you mean, though. But they, you mean like they... They can justify it because they're like they you can know. justify a little yeah. extra price. It's great yeah. quality food, and they run a really good, high quality business, right? Like, yeah, it's just a good restaurant. And I take it. I they do. You just go yes, like yes, 100%. like. Well, listen, like as you're saying that, I'm thinking back to the mango, and I'm gonna try that out. And if it works out well and it is that effective, we're gonna keep our same sense that we have now. We're going to add mango, but it's going to be an upcharge and it's going to be a difference. We're going to give it away at first. We have a new scent coming. We want to test it out. want to give you a feel. I'm give here telling people, take care of others. And you're going, here's how you upcharge them once they like it. Yeah, absolutely. Because everything, everything's for sale, man. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to work it into, they won't know they're paying extra necessarily because we're going to work it into some of our other packages. And it's just going to be included in there, but it'll be like, well, if you get this package instead, it comes with the mango and it comes with X, Y, Z and different stuff, you know? So yeah. Interesting. But uh, All right, so while we were there and I'll finish with this, while we were there, we found a Brazilian market. So I got some peach nectar. Oh, sure. Then I paired with some rum last night and I was like, that's fucking incredible. Uh, right. Peach oh, nectar and rum. Man. Let's just start there. And so then today I walked in, and I go, Wait, I got high nooners peach, and I've got, yeah, a little bit of nectar and rum with some. <laughs> okay, I peach I've actually yeah. never tried that, so that's the uh, all right. So look, man, you me started on all those news. Okay, so mango scents, peach mm. nectar. There we go. <laughs> the episode today is about fruits. That's what it is, <laughs> man. That is wicked. You know, it's all those little add-ons, all those little like additives. You know, like. Uh, yeah, rum on its own is good. Peach nectar on its own is good. The combination together, you know, it's like, uh, ah, interesting. I like that. I'm going I'm to have to play around here. Peach nectar, huh? All right, I'm going to go check that out. Now, do you think it made a difference if it's, like, actual peach nectar? Like, it's not artificial flavors. It's just, like, I'm assuming you got to... Always. Like, yeah. Always helps. Yeah, I mean, it's not just you peach. To... You know, so I, we... I love to, I've shopped at, uh, let's see, let's just call it uh, multicultural uh, grocery stores. Let's yeah. just call it that, right? Mm -hmm. Non-traditional American grocery stores. I've loved to shop at. Yeah. And uh, most of those markets you'll find nectar versus if you go to a traditional American style grocery store. Yeah. Because sugar water with 10% exactly. you know, juice additive or something, you know, like. Yeah. But finding pure nectar, I mean, you can find guava to mango. You can go back to that. I mean, there's all kinds of nectars, and you bet it's great. You, I mean, if you're a vodka person, of course, do that. I mean, that's that's high noon is vodka. But I just don't. I just 
I'm not, I can't do too much vodka. So yeah, it's yeah. too dry for me. I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. I need to yeah. once in a while I can do it with like some cucumber or something like that, but it's yeah. I, me, I'm more raw. I need to, something about the body of it, you know, it's got those different flavors and the complexity that, man, yeah, you know, plus it hits the spot, but <laughs> But man, that's awesome, man. I'm glad you had a good weekend like that, man. And uh, yeah, us too. It was, uh, it was a pretty quiet weekend, actually. We uh, we had plans with uh, some friends that were going to be coming by. Unfortunately, one of them, uh, his uncle, I think it was, had to get a something with his kidney anyway. He's back at the hospital, so he was going down to Niagara Falls for that. Uh, so we had some free time that kind of just came out of nowhere, which was nice. And so I said, well, you know, I'll get some stuff done around the house I wanted to do. And then while I was doing that, I put in my headphones and I'm doing this, doing that. And I just started thinking about all kinds of stuff. And so it was, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough time to ever, yeah, like to just sit and think, you know, like we all have kids, we have life, we have all this stuff going on. When you have a minute to just like, there's nothing going on and you can just think and zero in on stuff, man, I tell you, so I had some wicked ideas this past weekend. So I moved some things around on the roadmap, stuff like that. I got some, some pretty cool stuff, irons in the fire, that because uh, a big thing with Orbis X is we're not just a CRM where it's data entry. It's more than that. And a lot of the inspiration for the ideas, a lot of it comes from the group and we have amazing members that have great suggestions. And a lot of it too, though, comes from things I want to see in my own businesses. And because I own multiple different businesses in different industries, it helps because there's a lot of similarities at the same time as there's differences. And so I'll see something that I'm like, oh, shit, that works really well at our printing shop or that works well at our cell phone store or something like that. And I'm like, how could we take that same principle and use it to level up at our auto shop? You know, I think it's because there's all like I was saying with the like. If we don't think of business as a game, then we don't realize that there's actual mathematical. There's actual like there are. Like do I mean the, and... we say algorithm now, but you know, to these old school games, that was an algorithm, right? It was the same uh, thing. Yeah. And 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 you can think of business the same as you're going through and playing Pac-Man or you're going through and playing these old games where you can literally see more of the the structure of the game, right? Yes. Business is 100%. the same way. It has algorithms, it has structure, it has things that you must do in order to level up in the game. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And that's where it's, that becomes sort of the puzzle pieces that you can start to put together the building blocks. And it's it's just like what you said with the arcade games. It's not, you know, run by the old ones. It, it wasn't run by AI that's like, every time you play it could be slightly different than the time before. It was very calculated and that's how there there became all those like uh you know the cheat codes where if you do xyz you can advance yep. to this and so on and so forth mm -hmm. it was very strategic and life and business there's a lot of overlap there as well you know uh, but the problem is i think a lot of people just kind of get into business even if you're whether you're buying a business or you start a business you just kind of get into it and you just start doing what you think is working and if it works you're like okay great you keep doing more of the same but it's rare that we take the time to revisit and say, okay, but what if I do X, Y, Z and plan it out? How would that change my trajectory going forward? Like we all set these new goals and new levels that we want to hit targets. We want to reach so on and so forth. But how often do we have the time or take the time? Cause we do have the time. How often do we take the time to sit down and say, okay, so maybe if I do X, Y, Z or start studying or listening to, you know, podcasts like ours and we say like, okay, if I do this and this and this, these incremental changes, what's it going to do? And it, this weekend, that was, that was one of those moments for me where I sat down and even though we've hit levels that a lot of other shops have told me like, Oh, how'd you get to that? I want to get to that level. I'm still trying to level up to levels that we want to get to. And there's levels that I want to get to that maybe other shops don't even want to get to. They have a different level in mind and so on and so forth. But I, I thought about it a lot and it got me thinking about a lot of our messaging with our customers and the way we portray our story and the things that we say in our ads and the things that we say even just on our website or our messages. So we're revamping our whole website now. That's that's part of it for the auto shop uh, because, well, because <laughs> that brings me to my word of the day, because, uh, because oftentimes 
the because is basically our purpose, right? We do ceramic coating and we're the best and we do this and this and this and this. A lot of times we end up repeating just the same kind of messages other people are putting out there and it sounds like marketing fluff. But once you know what you're going after and you can figure out what you're doing differently, your because changes. And you can start to relay that because. You can say, you know, we do X, Y, Z. We use this product and we use this process and we send our staff for training here or we have our staff study this or we have each staff member has to do, you know, 200 practice tints before they can actually tint a customer's car, you know, things like that. All these things we do because we want the quality to be this or we want the results to be this or we do it because we see our customer leaving and they're, they're happy that their son or daughter in the back seat's not going to burn their arms anymore because there's ceramic tint in the back, you know, these kinds of things. It becomes your because. And if you haven't taken time to think of your because, your because is just parroting what everybody else's because is. Oh, we use this product because that's what everybody else in the industry said. You know, we bought a territory. We have a territory because everybody said we need a territory. And your because is meaningless at that point because you're just doing what everybody else is doing. So I took some time this weekend when I had some just dead time. I was like, well, what do I do? I can't just sit still. I got to do something. And I often do think about, you know, our purpose and how we do things and, and write things up. But I, I got to thinking about it mostly, I think, because I had a call with my dad. I hadn't talked to him for, you know, I don't know, it's been a couple of weeks. We were catching up and my dad used to be a high school teacher. He retired early uh, and that way he could make way for new teachers to take his place. And he kind of fiddled around for like two or three years and you know, like most people that retire early, they're like, well, what do I do now? Right? So got a little stir crazy and he started a construction company. It was his first company ever and no experience uh, in construction. Well, he had experience in construction in terms of, you know, he was born before the internet and all these kind of things. So it's like, <laughs> you, you built shit. That's what you did, right? Um, so he, uh, anyway, he starts his company, but he needed a lot of help and mentorship to get it going. Um, I was giving my dad a lot of help in the beginning, getting it going, figuring out how to do it. It was just him and this other guy. And they called it old school builders. And they were two, you know, older guys. And they were doing stuff, building cottages, things like that. Initially, it was just minor repairs. And then they grew that to the point that they were building entire cottages from the ground up. And then they started hiring employees. And his business partner was anti-employees. He was like, no, 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 no. It's going to be headaches. We can do this all ourselves." And my dad was saying, I'm 65, I think he was at the time. Now he's 67 or 68, something like that, 68. And he was like, no, 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 we can't keep doing this forever. We can't keep, you know, like we, we got to build a roof. We're going to, what, carry the trusses up there. And we're going to do this and that. We can't keep doing this forever. We need employees or else we just shut it down and we just fully retire. That's it. Um, so they, they finally caved. Well, the other guy caved and they hired their first couple employees. Started getting things going. At the time, my dad was asking me for a lot of advice. And he was leaning on me heavily, like, hey, you've hired people before. What's the process? There were so many different, like, things, different levels that he had to achieve that he just had no idea. It was so far out of his realm. He was like, well, how do I hire people? How do I pay them? Uh, how do I file taxes for them? How do I pay their benefits? How do I this? Every week, it was one other question, right? And so I'm giving him this guidance, and I'm, I'm showing him how to, like, you know, level up his business in different ways week after week. And then I started to realize after a while, I was actually starting to learn some things from him, which was kind of nice. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's my dad. I've been learning shit from him since I was a little boy. But I mean, in business, I had been in business a lot longer than my dad has. And so it was kind of a one-way relationship at first, but now it's gone the other way where things will happen in his business. And because he deals with very different scenarios than I do, he'll have something that he tells me, I'll be like, you know, dad, what, what happened to your business this week? And he'll tell me some things and how he solved it. And I can learn a lot from him. And I learned a lot about his because and how he grew his company so fast. Cause now they've, they, like, they've got, I think four or five houses on the go that they're building right now, like full on builds, which is pretty crazy. And, um, and in, in a very short period of time, and he told me about this story. Uh, it's a two part to it where he had a bad interaction. They designed something for this client and then 
one of the workers uh, just graduated. She got her engineering thing and everything. And she went a little off script. And she said, oh, I think if we do this instead, the customer will be really happy and it makes a lot more sense. But it was different from the initial plan that the customer had signed on for. So they went ahead and they did that change and the customer was really upset. And the customer said, look, Dave, you know, like, uh, that's my dad's name. Um, you guys went off script. I'm not happy with it. If it has to stay that way, I'll pay my bill. I'll pay whatever I owe you guys. But I just want you to know I'm not happy with it. And I was thinking about it and was like, okay, he could have just taken the money, said, well, it is what it is. It's better, you know, and sold it to her like that, done. And he thought about it and he said, no, he says, reality is she hired us to do a thing. And our because is people hire us because we send our people to get proper training on things, to do things the right way, but based on what the customer wants and so on and so forth. And we do have, you know, some input for them that will make things better if they say, hey, I want to build this like this. We suggest things in a different way that are either structurally sound or maybe make more sense for their living arrangements or whatever it is. But that's our because is we take the time to talk with the customer. And he said, so somewhere we skip those steps. And so we're not following our because. And so he said, you know what? Called her up and said, I'd like to take you to dinner and talk with you. And she said, okay. And he said, I could have taken her to a coffee shop. And he said, he figured coffee shop seemed more like it was going to just end bad. It was going to be more like a, you know, I don't really care about you as a client. I'm going to spend the least amount possible and, and let's just move on. And he took her there. And the first thing he said is he said, listen, uh, when, when they sat down at the restaurant, he said, look, I know we have some stuff to talk about. The elephant in the room. We've got some things to talk about you're upset about. And we will. But first, I just want to get to know you. I just want to figure out what's going on in your life. You know, and he said, let's just talk. So he said, you know, like, what's 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 going on? What do you, what do you do for fun? How are your kids? You know, stuff like that. And she started going on about different things. And she said, you know, uh, you know, my daughter, this, that, and she's just talking about stuff. My dad said, he just listened, just listened to her. After that, he says, okay, now it's time we talk about things. And he had gone to uh, the office depot here. He printed off some, you know, layouts and stuff of the house or whatever it was that they had messed up. And he said, I want you to take a look at these and tell me what it was that that is making you upset and what we can do to fix it and so on and so forth. And he said, because we're here to provide you with the living space that you want for the reasons you want. And so if it's, you know, I want my grandkids to have a place to play or I want this and that, whatever it is, that's what we want to do ultimately. But we also have a lot of knowledge on other things that maybe might make more sense or maybe, maybe not as safe. So let's just talk about it. So they talked about some things, they hashed it over and everything. In the end, she said, you know, I'm really happy you took the time to talk to me. And she said, the whole reason I was okay with taking this meeting was because of what you put at the end of your invoices. And he said, really? What was it about the invoices that struck you? And she says, at the bottom of your invoice, it says, thank you for your business and trusting us because dot, dot, dot. And then you listed each of the employees and how your business has been helping them with their life. And so at the end of my dad's invoices, he put a little thing, a little story, and it says, you know, we're happy to do this for you because, and then it says, you know, one of the ladies, her name's Willow. And it says, because Willow just graduated from this engineering college, da, 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 and she's really happy to, you know, build homes for people and so on and so forth. The next person, blah, blah, blah. So he told this whole little story at the bottom of an invoice, like it's an invoice, you know, it should just be like, oh, here's the total, here's the this, that. But he put these little things and she said, it made her feel like they were just real people and she could trust them, that they would fix whatever it was and stuff like that. And so my dad told me, um, at first I said, you know, congratulations on saving that deal. But he also ended up getting two more builds out of her. She wants to build this, you know, little shed and something else and some other stuff. But anyways, he salvaged the deal and it taught me something is that first off, every communication, I do believe you have an opportunity to have a conversation with a customer much more than just here's your invoice. The second part of that is that it helps to put out your reason for why you are in business, why you're doing things, why you are different in, in every moment that you can, because that's going to separate you from everything else. You know, it's going to separate you if, if all parts are equal. If my dad's construction company can do the same build as somebody else's, it's the same thing as, you know, my auto shop. We, we do the same services that most of the other shops in our city do. So what separates us from them? It can't just be price. It's got to be something else. So Maybe it's the products we use, but okay. So the products you use, but 
why do you use those products? So you should take some time to think about your because, and I do X, Y, Z because of this, or I use this product because of that. So anyway, my tip for today, my main tip was on because, and I'm going to lead into a little story because we're having some drinks about Miller Lite and how they tried to make some changes in their business because they thought their customer base would appreciate it, but they realized they were getting a little too focused and a little too narrow on one demographic. It wasn't working out well for them. And so sometimes your because should be a little more amplified. I don't know, a little, a little more broadened. That's it, uh, broaden your horizons. Uh, so quick story, so Miller Lite, um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the brand, uh, but uh, so they make a beer. I don't know if you're a Miller Lite fan. I eh, Here and there, fair enough. So back in the day, yeah, yeah, there we go. So no, back in the day, especially back, back in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in the day, they were running some commercials, and I don't know if you'll remember the slogan from them, but their commercials were everything you wanted in a beer and less. Do you remember that? Did you ever hear it? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I think so, but yeah, they were I mean, a lot of slogans. Miller Lite, <laughs> sure. yeah. there's one bar that I got pints. For twenty five cents. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> so it's <was> like, <laughs> so <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So so they ran that slogan for like I don't know twenty five thirty years or something like that. And uh, the reason was so Miller Lite produced a beer just like all other people, and they had no real because other than they just made a beer. And so they were trying to get focused with their because. But sometimes when you do that, you can swing and miss. And so they decided to go with a beer that was marketed as having lower calories, less calories. And so they took that approach and they said, you know, we make a beer that you can enjoy because you won't gain weight. You won't this, you won't that. And they thought their sales were going to skyrocket. They didn't. In fact, it was the opposite. <laughs> they, uh, their market share dropped significantly for that particular line of their beer. Now, they did realize, though, that there were a couple little cities and towns where the sales were actually spiking. And so the, when they were looking at this, they said, why are they spiking there? So they set up some focus groups and they were asking people, you know, like, why is it that you, you know, switch to Miller Lite or why are you buying more Miller Lite so and so forth? And the reasons were surprising, actually. It had nothing to do with the fact that there was less calories. Uh, what they found is it was mostly in, there were like steelworking towns and, you know, like a lot of construction heavy uh, areas. And what it was is the workers, when they were, you know, done their long day of hard labor, they wanted a beer that didn't make them feel full. They just didn't want to feel bloated. They were working outside in the heat. They were, you know, ready to go home. They wanted to have a beer and drive home without feeling like they're just, you know, bloated and going to throw up or something. So they didn't care about the less calories at all, at all. In fact, the studies found that most of them were already, you know, had a beer belly and they just didn't care. <laughs> they wore it with pride, you know, it was bought and paid for. <laughs> so, so long story short, they started asking them, you know, more questions and they, they realized that it was the same across the board in each of these little towns where sales were skyrocketing. It was because they did care about less, but not less calories. What they cared about was that it was less bloating. They felt less full. So they switched their marketing. They changed. They started working with this other marketing company and they said, uh, you know, we want to go with some new promotion. And they came up with the everything you wanted in a beer and less. And so their because shifted. So it was, you should choose our beer because it's everything you want in a beer and less. But they just made that one tweak by removing the less calories because their market share, nobody gave a shit about less calories. What they cared about was it was less of something else. But by them establishing that, you know, that because, that purpose, their shares actually, or not share, sorry, their market share went up 11% which across the board is massive, you know, uh, when we're talking, yeah, we're talking millions and millions of dollars and lots of cans of beer sold and drank. And what they found is that the same people that tried it once before in the other focus groups, when it was the less calories, but didn't like it, came back again in the focus groups and said that they now drink it regularly because they agree it makes them feel less full. 
same taste, less full. So then they started running with those commercials. And it was, you know, two guys arguing. And they're like, oh, that's the same great taste. Yeah, but I feel less full. Less no, full. The same great, great taste. taste. Less exactly. full. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less full. That's exactly it. So that was the commercial. That same commercial, by the way, ran for 15 years. Mm -hmm. that exact commercial. Crazy. That part I remember. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? <laughs> so basically, they found there because through focus groups and trial and error and everything. But initially it was too narrow and in the wrong direction. And so what you need to do is establish what your because is, what your reason is, give it some thought, but at the same time, make sure it aligns with what your customers are looking for and what they're going to choose you for. So your because is important for you as a business and why you do things a certain way, why you use a certain product or so on and so forth. We have to make sure that your maintenance clients, your ceramic coating clients, so on and so forth, are coming to you because your because matches up with their because. So I sell this or I service this or I do this because and your customer purchases because of something else. So when those two line up, you're going to see that increase just like Miller Lite. That's basically all she wrote for my tip today. There we go. See, it was a long roundabout way of getting there, but we got there. <laughs> More than a tip, but you know what? We won't complain. Yeah, yeah. For... <laughs> it was a halfsy. It was a halfsy. It was... <laughs> wasn't to the base. It's fine. <laughs> but the... oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> See, too much, too much rum, but no nectar. That's the thing. That's the <laughs> Everything I want in a glass of rum and less. But uh, yeah, no, awesome, man. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, we, got some, we got some good episodes coming up, guys. Uh, so definitely pay attention for that. Uh, keep sending the questions and by all means, please be like Randy, be like Dijon, listen to things, execute them and put them into action. And you will definitely see a difference in your business. 100%. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. And I expect everybody after this episode to please book a call with your Google rep. 100%. <laughs> I'll leave it there. I can't help you with Google can. I promise you that. <laughs> I can help you with the CRM side of things and marketing, but call Google. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Great tips today, man. Great job. That's it. Absolutely. You too, man. Here, community. Cheers. Community. All right, Marty. I'll see you next week. And next guys, week. Uh, tune in to Pines Policy Podcast and be sure to check out Ceramic Snow. It's, it's uh, a <laughs> new and improved 2.0. There we go. 2 All right. I'll see you next week, man. See you, man. Cheers.